this isn't financial advice. I'm not a professional investor. Basically, I have no idea what I'm doing and you shouldn't listen to me. You should make your own decisions. And that's the disclosure. Hey everyone, Tim Stoddard here, coming to you once again from my home office in Colorado where it is six degrees outside, which is why I am wearing this hat. The subject that we are talking about is investing, is financial investing. I'm gonna start this video by making a controversial statement. And that statement is that the majority of investors aren't good at investing. And it's not that they're dumb, it's because investing is really, really hard. And when people intentionally try to pick investments that they think are gonna be quote unquote winners, the odds are drastically, drastically against them. So a lot of times we call them stock pickers, right? People that are investing in the stock market in particular and are trying to pick stocks because they think they know what the future is gonna be and they think that their stock is gonna grow, almost all of those people lose money. There's a real famous study that I like to talk about that really makes me laugh. They had two different teams that were gonna invest in different companies, right? On one team, it was a group of monkeys, actual monkeys, and they gave these monkeys darts and they trained these monkeys how to throw the darts. And the monkeys would throw the darts on a, on a wall or a cork board or something and they had a bunch of different companies on the cork board that the monkeys were throwing darts at. And whatever company the monkey hit with the dart is the company that they would invest in. On the other side was some of like the most prestigious hedge fund investors in the world. Some of the, the, the smartest, most like intellectually capable investors in the world. And they put the two against each other. They had the monkeys throwing darts against the best investors in the world. And who do you think created more of a return? You guessed it, the monkeys. There, nobody knows the future. Nobody knows what's gonna happen. And that's what makes investing so hard. And that is why I advise you not to do that. <laughs> it's like, don't do the thing that doesn't work, right? I invest in the S&P 500 really exclusively. The S&P 500 is a fund, which is basically a group of companies pulled together. And the S&P 500 is made up of the 500 top American companies. And so when you put money into the S&P 500, you're buying a small, small, small percentage of equity, of ownership, basically, in the top 500 American companies. And what's also nice about this strategy is that there's not a lot of fees associated with investing into the S&P 500 because there's nobody managing it. A lot of times when you invest with an actual fund manager, whether that's a mutual fund or a hedge fund, the, the fees can be really high because basically you're paying for expertise. You're paying for somebody who supposedly knows what they're doing to manage your money. Whereas when you invest in the S&P 500, there's no one to manage it because it's, it's just quite literally the top 500 American companies. And it, nobody has to like decide what they are. They just are what they are. And so the fees are much, much lower. And typically, the S&P 500 will make a yearly return of about 7 to 8%, something like that. Sometimes a little lower, sometimes a little higher. Uh, during COVID, when the government was pumping a ton of money into the system, the return on the S&P, I think it was like 14% at one time. It was something crazy, maybe even higher than that. And what happens is people hear that number. They think 8% on my money, that's nuts. So if I put 100 bucks in, it's going to take me a year to make $8. That doesn't seem like a big return. But people don't understand the power of compounding. So compounding basically just means that your money stacks on top of itself. So let's say that the first year I invest $100 and I make 8% and I make eight bucks. Well, then I put that money back into the market. And now all of a sudden I'm making 8% on $108. And I don't know what the math is, I'm not gonna try to do it, but now all of a sudden I have, let's just call it $120. And now I'm making 8% on that $120, right? So that's a, a drastic oversimplification. But what happens is, in the beginning, you're just slowly, slowly making money, slowly, slowly making money, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden the numbers get big enough that you, sh you grow exponentially. And a large number of American millionaires have made their money through this tactic. Sounds so simple, right? And it is that simple. Here's where most people screw it up. Most people think that they still know better 
that they still know when to invest their money into the market and then when to take their money back out of the market right before the stocks or the market as a whole is gonna go down. And uh, that never works. It just never works because once again, nobody knows anything about investing. Nobody knows the future. And so the tried and true way for me and for a lot of people, and this is like even Warren Buffett's best advice, is you just dollar cost average your money into the S&P 500. So what that means is you put the same amount of money in uh, consistently on whatever your schedule is. So I put 500 bucks into the S&P 500 every Friday, no matter what, doesn't matter. So if the stock market is really, really high and I'm buying my equity in these 500 companies for like a really high rate, I don't stress about it because eventually the market's gonna go down. And so instead of trying to time the market and pulling my money out when it goes down, I just buy my 500 bucks every Friday and now all of a sudden I buy cheap returns. I buy cheap equity on my investment in these companies. And so when the market goes up, I'm making a better return. And when the market goes down, I'm buying my equity for cheap. But the thing is, and here really, really is the kicker. And this is the part that makes people uncomfortable because they are banking on something that they can't totally control. It's a leap of faith, right? The American economy has been thriving since basically the start of the financial system. And even though there have been periods where the market collapses, most notably the Great Depression in the 1930s, and then in the 70s, there was a huge inflation crisis, and then in 2008, there was a huge housing crisis. Like those are the three biggest collapses we've had, not even notwithstanding World War II and, and World War I, but uh, even those, the, the, the collapses have been the, the biggest declines in the rate of the market. So even with those collapses, even with all of the terrible shit that happens every day and with the market going up and down all the time, on a timeline, the market always goes up. It's always gone up. And so there's no reason to think that the market won't continue to go up. We just live at a time where there's a lot of pessimism about America and a lot of pessimism about capitalism, but the numbers don't lie. Capitalism by far has created the most wealth and the most abundance and the most prosperity in the history of the world. Our economy right now, the American economy, is continuing to ratchet up and to ratchet up and to ratchet up because the incentives are as such that people want to invest in a growing economy. So there's no reason, none at all, no reason at all to think that another 20 years from now, the S&P 500 won't be at a rate higher, at another order of magnitude higher than it is today. There's no reason to think that at all. If anything, it, it's trending to be like the most successful couple of decades in the history of the world, assuming that nothing, that no catastrophic events happen. So no matter what you do, you're taking a risk. If you're investing your money, you're taking a risk, period. But the thing is, not investing your money is actually riskier because the intentional rate of inflation is usually around 2%. So your money is losing value every single day. And if you're not putting it into productive assets that are creating a return on, on your money, then you're actually just going backwards. And that's the worst place to be. I hope that you put your money in the market. Once again, not financial advice. Don't listen to me. I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm talking about. But what I can tell you is that when I look at my returns and I look at my portfolio and I have conversations with some of my friends who were getting in and out of Bitcoin or, or like really trying to pick stocks that they think are going to be winners, I have better returns than basically all of them. And I haven't done anything. I don't even pay attention to the stock market because why am I going to bother wasting my time? I put my 500 bucks in every Friday, no matter what happens. And so where the market is today is pretty irrelevant because it doesn't matter. I'm concerned where the market is going to be 10 to 20 years from now. And that, traditionally speaking in America, is how you get rich from investing. The best way to get rich is simply to ride the coattails of the American stock market because we have the best tailwind behind us. And that way you don't have to think about anything. You don't have to try to make the right decision. You just go along for the ride.
and it's great. <laughs> it's the best. All right, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, I appreciate you as always, and I'll talk to you next week. See you later.